It may be hard to see, but this crack is keeping this KC-135 Stratotanker from flying. And if it did fly, the results could have been tragic. We might be in trouble, definitely. Um, cast rock failure, Planko ran off the runway, gear could came out, just bad stuff. That's not an exaggeration either. Normally, when the refuelers need full overhaul maintenance, they're allowed one more flight, straight to Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma. That's where the depot team is located, who specialize in that type of maintenance. Instead, the depot team came to Joint Base Andrews to fix the plane in its own hangar. So to recap, the aircraft had a crack, the crack was bad enough to keep it from flying, so they got it fixed, right? Well, yeah, but that's not the story. The story is about the non-destructive inspection team, a group of reservists who found the crack, and how they are changing the way the Air Force does aircraft inspections. You know, I don't suppose there are many things in this world that are indispensable, but this old bird comes about as close to it as you can get for an airplane. It's a KC-135 Stratotanker, and it's used for refueling aircraft in flight. McConnell had a, an aircraft uh, TDY down to Charleston Air Force Base, returned from a local sortie at night uh, when they landed. Uh, basically, the aircraft was slowing down through 25 knots. The crew felt, uh, felt something happened to the airplane and saw that the left main landing gear had gone through the left wing. After the investigation came through, it was due to some corrosion under the lower wing between the lower wing and the main landing gear trunnions. So imagine that every time an aircraft touches down, all of the force from the ground and the plane as it meets are directly pushed into those spots. And one of those spots, the trunnion support rib, is located here, hidden behind a small access point that is just a little bit bigger than the width of an arm. So this is the only way that we have to get into where we have to be able to see the uh, trunnion rib. After the landing gear decided to break through the wing in South Carolina, that area of the KC-135 was scrutinized for stress across the fleet but those inspections relied on senses of fingertips. Because when they do the inspection, a lot of times their hand is going up in areas where they can't see, they can't uh, visually um, locate, you know, the areas that they need to inspect. So even after we took the part out, you could clearly see the crack uh, going across the part, but they weren't, weren't able to see that. Um, we would go out with a Mariner flashlight and um, you go in and you inspect the area uh, visually to kind of see um, what you're working with first. So we look to see what we need stripped, what, um, what access we have, like to what areas and what we'd actually be able to inspect. And then um, you go in, it's kind of like a blind inspection. And since the KC-135 is expected to stay in service until 2040, the 100% inspection of the trunnion support rib is critical to its success. And that is when the 459th non-destructive inspection team came up with an idea that didn't rely on looking at a reflection or feeling something that could be a crack or just a paint chip. And so instead of using a flashlight and mirror, the shop came up with using a boroscope. And if you're not familiar what a boroscope is, it's a small camera attached with a flashlight and a monitor to be able to see. So in a case like this, I could use this boroscope to sneak inside a small access point and be able to see everything that's inside. Because you can watch where your hand is and you can make sure you're going around the bolts correctly. You know, you get like a much thorough inspection when you can actually see what you're inspecting instead of just the old way we just had our hand in the panel and you're kind of just guessing where you are. And so the boroscope just kind of helped us actually see what we're inspecting at that time. The boroscope was a game changer. They found cracks in two of their KC-135s, including this one that required the depot team to fix it at Andrews. But the NDI team was not done. They had to share their newfound way of working smarter, not harder, to the rest of the Air Force. It just changes everything. I honestly, once we started using that, I didn't see how other people were doing it without it. They went to a few bases to help do inspections, and they showcased like what they were able to do with the boroscope and taught them how to utilize it in uh, different techniques that maybe other bases weren't using. And they even learned some things too. Soon the technical orders will be updated to include the use of a boroscope for these type of inspections. And as KC-135s go to Tinker Air Force Base for periodic depot maintenance, their trunnion ribs will be removed and replaced. Reporting from Joint Base Andrews, I'm Air Force Sergeant Brent Skeen, 459th Air Refueling Wing, Public Affairs.